All right, welcome back. We are now on episode 7 of Everything You Need to Know About JPEG. We are finally on the last major step of decoding, so we just have to perform the color conversion to go from the YCBCR color space to the RGB color space. And it's not all that complicated, so this probably won't take very long. You may recall way back from episode 1 that I briefly described the color conversion in terms of these kinds of equations, but I left it vague because it just wasn't important at the time to go into a whole lot of detail. But all we really have to do is talk about what these coefficients are in front of every variable. Of course, episode 1 was more focused on the encoding process, so we were talking about how to calculate Y, C, B, and C, R, but we are going in the other direction, so we need similar structured equations to give us R, G, and B. So if we just swap each Y, C, B, and C, R with R, G, B, this is what we have. We just need to determine the equation to calculate R, G, and B. So what are each of these little constants? Well, for starters, the R is not dependent on CB, which is like saying this constant is zero, so we don't need this term. Likewise, B is not dependent on CR, so this term goes away. In all three cases for R, G, and B, the constant attached to the luminance is one, so we can just ignore those. And in all three cases, the constant added on at the end is 128. The reason for this is that immediately after the inverse DCT, the Y, CB, and CR values that we get are actually in the range negative 128 to positive 127. So as a result, if we directly use those values to calculate R, G, and B, then R, G, and B will also be in the range negative 128 to positive 127. So we move all of them up by 128. We could just as easily add 128 at the end of the inverse DCT step in which case our entire color conversion, both YCB, CR, and RGB, will always happen in the range 0 to 255, but it doesn't really matter either way. For these last remaining factors here, this coefficient is clearly a positive number because more red chrominance means more red, and the same thing for the blue chrominance and the blue, and you may recall from episode 1 that the G is inversely related to the blue and red chrominance, so these constants are negative. So all we have to do is simplify this and clean this up a little bit, and replace the remaining four constants with their actual value. And here's what that looks like. The two values used to calculate G are negative, R has no CB component, and B has no CR component, and all of them are moved up by 128. So we just have to do this calculation on every pixel. Let's try it out. So back in our main function, after performing inverse DCT, we just have to perform the color conversion before we write the bitmap file. And we'll add this function in right in between these two functions. Okay, so as you are familiar with, our usual pattern is to loop through every MCU, and then loop through every color component in that MCU, and then process a single component. We can't really do that with color conversion though, because the components are not processed independently. To convert a pixel, we have to combine the pixel value from all three components. So instead, let's just start with a loop that loops through every MCU, And then instead of calling a function that processes a component, let's call a function that processes the entire MCU. And we'll add that right above right here.
So we'll process an entire MCU by reference, and we'll loop through all 64 of its pixels. Per pixel, we will use the Y, CB, and CR values to calculate the R, G, and B values, like we just talked about. And this is almost good enough, but the only problem is that because of the negatives and because of the floating point math, it's possible that when this expression is evaluated and the value is assigned to R, G, and B and forced into an integer value, it might be negative 1, negative 2, or it might be 256, 257. And there's nothing we can do to guarantee that that won't happen really, so we have to check for invalid values and clamp the values of R, G, and B between 0 and 255. But we can make it nice and short just like that. If any R, G, or B value is below 0, set it to 0. And if any R, G, or B value is beyond 255, set it to 255. We just used the Y, C, B, and C, R value for pixel I, so we will store the R, G, and B back to pixel I. And there we go. And that's all we have to do, so let's try it out. Again, here is what some of our files look like without the color space conversion. And when we run this on cat.jpg, we finally get the right BMP file. So there you have it. Of course, remember that our decoder still only works correctly on non-subsampled baseline JPEGs. But over the next couple episodes, we'll work on supporting those modes as well. We can also go ahead and run our decoder on every JPEG file in the folder by just saying star.jpg. Because we wrote our main function to loop through every provided argument, and the shell will expand this into a list of arguments that match every JPEG file name in the current folder. So let's run this. And there we go. And it worked on all four of our test files. What's really cool is now that we have the entire process handled and we have the entire pixel array in memory, we can manipulate the pixel array however we want to produce any kind of effect. I'm not going to go overboard with it, but I'll just show a couple. However, you should absolutely feel free to experiment with this all you want. We can do really simple stuff like forcing some of these values to zero. So if we do this, the only color in the final image will be red. And that looks basically like you would expect. You see nothing but shades of red including, of course, dark shades of red all the way to black. One perhaps slightly more interesting thing that we can do is just take the YCBCR, but still shift them by 128 to put them in the range 0 to 255. And this is what they look like if we output Y, C, B, and C, R, but in the correct range, 0 to 255. We can also instantly turn this into a grayscale image by setting all three components equal to the luminance. And you can see that very easily turned all of them into grayscale images which was made so easy because the luminance just carries brightness data. So I've undone all those changes and gone back to the real color conversion. I just want to show two more cool experiments we can do. When calculating the R, G, and B, we can pretend that the luminance value is always zero. And we can pretend that the CR value is always zero. So let's see what the actual R, G, and B end up looking like if we only have blue chrominance data. And this is what we get, kind of gray, greenish, yellow pictures. And what if we instead use the real CR values 
but then always set the CB values to zero. And now instead we get pinkish gray pictures. If you look at the Wikipedia page for YCBCR, what we just did is what was done here to get the luminance, CB, and CR channels as separate images. You can see that this CR image here is the same effect we just achieved. And the CB image is kind of yellow-green. If you would like, you're free to read this Wikipedia page to learn a little bit more about the equations that we just used, but I don't find it incredibly insightful. Just note that on Wikipedia, this is assuming that all of the input values are already in the range 0 to 255, the Y, CB, and CR. So the Y value is not adjusted, and the CB and CR have to have 128 subtracted. Because all of these scalars assume that these values are in the range negative 128 to positive 127. For us, since these values are already in the correct range, we do have to adjust Y, by adding 128 on the end, and do not adjust CB or CR. So there you have it. Now you should have a good understanding of all of the fundamentals of JPEG compression. Next, we'll cover a couple extra topics, starting with chroma subsampling. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it, as always, and we'll continue this next time in episode 8.